It's the Daily Doug. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Doug. Thanks for being with me today. My friends, you have found me on a Monday. That means, of course, it's a Metal Monday. But more importantly, this week, it's a Maiden Monday because we're going back to complete our full album listen to their sophomore album, Killers, and I am pumped for this one, y'all. It's hard to believe that it's already been four weeks since we listened to Side One together. On that occasion, I was paying tribute to Paul Diano, who was the first singer of Iron Maiden, who has recently passed away. And uh, surprisingly, even though I had done a whole lot of videos about Iron Maiden's music, I hadn't got to any of the songs from this album previously. And I have to say, listening to Side One of Killers was one of the more enjoyable album side listens that I can remember from uh, Iron Maiden. And y'all have told me that Side Two is just as good or better. So I'm ready to dive in and hear the rest of the album. Um, on Side One, we heard The Ides of March, which was a short instrumental. We heard Wrathchild, Murders in the Rue Morgue, Another Life, Genghis Khan, which was an instrumental, and Innocent Exile. But here's the thing. As I made use of the 2015 remastered playlist for this album from Iron Maiden's own YouTube channel, they uh, included the very same video twice in the playlist. They combined Purgatory and Genghis Khan. And they put the video where uh, Genghis Khan should be in side one, and they put the same video with the same two songs later where, uh, where Purgatory should be on side two. Interesting, right? Uh, but I don't see anything wrong with hearing that particular track again. I see that it's the most viewed video in the uh, album's playlist, and I want a second shot at it, to be uh, quite frank. So on side two, here's what we're going to hear. Uh, we're going to hear Killers, the title track, Prodigal Son, uh, Purgatory, and Genghis Khan again together, and uh, Drifter as we finish out the album. And as we recall, the album was released in February of 1981. It was their first with guitarist Adrian Smith, as well as uh, who would be their longtime producer, Martin Birch. And uh, sadly, it's also the last Iron Maiden album to feature Paul Diano on vocals. I say sadly, I mean, we, we got, you know, Bruce Dickinson, who is wonderful. But yeah, this is the last uh, album to feature Paul on vocals. And I'm, I'm really pumped to get to these songs, y'all, because uh, I really enjoyed hearing Paul's voice on the uh, on the very first album and on the first side of this album and I'm eager to see what these songs sound like but before we get to the music I am pleased to welcome Starzy Creations as the sponsor of today's video. I am so very happy to be telling y'all about these great products from Starzy Creations. They are one of our new advertisers here on the channel and I just love their work. Check these out. These are a few of the radiant illuminations that I have had made for the Daily Doug. They add pop and pizzazz and an illuminated piece of wall art for my studio. And I've just loved uh, getting to know the folks at this company, Starzy Creations. They are now providing custom designs based on your most cherished memories and photos. Their new radiant illuminations collection offers a unique way to showcase what matters most to you, whether it's a treasured family photograph or your company's logo. And these pieces are more than just decor. They're a real statement, y'all, and they turn your personal memories and your brand identities into glowing masterpieces. So here is what Starzy is offering this holiday season, y'all. Check it out exclusively to Daily Doug viewers. They are offering 40, 40% off site-wide. It's a great deal and exclusive for the Daily Doug community. The link that you go to is starzycreations.com slash 
Doug. And once you're there, you can uh, peruse the site. You can do your own shopping. For the custom creations, there is a spot for you to upload your image and then they will prep it and provide a proof before creating your custom piece. Here is how I am using it this year. Y'all, this is a picture that I took last year of my mom's beautiful Cocker Spaniel dogs, Roscoe and Sassy. And so I thought, well, wouldn't a picture of my mom's dogs in their house illuminated look great? This is what it uh, ended up looking like, y'all. I don't have it plugged in right now, but you can tell we took the background away and we were able to get this made. And I'm going to be gifting this to my mom this holiday season. I can't wait to uh, share this with her. She's going to absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. So this is available to y'all as well. Uh, just use the link starzycreations.com slash Doug or you can use the promo code DAILYDUG40 to receive 40% off any of the Starzy Creations products. These are special, custom, 21st century pieces of art, as far as I'm concerned, y'all. And I'm really proud to be associated with this new and up-and-coming business. Go get your custom Radiant Illuminations from Starzy Creations today. All right, y'all, with that being said, let's get into this music, shall we? I have, whoop, hang on now. I have this set to uh, play this side of music without interruption. And if I feel the need to pause it, I will. Otherwise, let's just hang out and listen to a great classic side of Iron Maiden music together. We've got Paul Diano on vocals, Dave Murray and Adrian Smith are on the guitars. Steve Harris is on the bass. Clive Burr is on the drums. Uh, I'm ready, y'all. Let's raise a glass and up the irons for uh, Killers. Side two from Iron Maiden. Off we go. Okay. Starts with the bass. A little tremolo in the guitar, that's cool. They're in E. Ow, yeah! Now there it sounds like they're in A. To take Back to E. This has become a signature song for Paul uh, in his solo career, I think. And it's again on the subject of mental health, um, like a bunch of songs have been already on this album. We're talking about a madman who is stalking people on the subway and taking them out. Okay. in the first person. They're not me anymore. Ooh. 
really progressive. This bridge is going somewhere they haven't been before. I can see what a life's meant to be. You'll never know how I came to foresee it. Made it back to E for some guitars. Six. They moved to A. That's really solid. Same move. They go to the five and then step right up the natural minor scale. You walk in the subway, my eyes burn a hole in your back. Don't walk in the subway while he's down there. My bloodlust defies all my needs. So he's not remorseful about this. No, he's coming for us. That's a great song, by the way. Awesome way to start off this side of music. Major? The next song is called Prodigal Son. The title coming from the biblical well-known story, right? The parable of the prodigal son. Ooh. Flat three to major one. Major one to the five to the four, both major chords, and then flat three. That's a G major chord. And then the G turns to G sharp over the E to make it major. All major chords. Okay, and we're in a lilt compound meter. in minor now. Now it's major again. Help me please. I'm on my knees. Lamia. Lamia, please try to help me. Did he 
he sell his soul to the devil? In Greek mythology, Lamia or Lamia is a female demon who's known for seducing men and doing even worse things to children, killing them. Flat six, we're back into minor. This is seven. Down to flat six. And no longer in a compound meter. Simple meter. into the compound meter. So they're going back to this progression again. There's a flat three. got a hold of my soul and it's driving me mad. Wow. It's not a concept album, but we're on similar topics for each of these songs. Back to uh, simple metrical structure. Solid. So next, we're going to hear the same combination track that I heard as part of the side one video. It's going to be Purgatory uh, and then uh, going into Genghis Khan. And I'm excited to give this one another shot. in completely separate tracks. Which 
back to B. We're going back and forth between B and D. place to be. It comes from Catholicism, right? It's, I mean, I'm not Catholic, but it's where you go when they can't figure out if you're good or bad. You know, you're just in limbo. It's its own kind of torture, I think. You know? I'm hearing the slight differences in the internal rhythm of the guitars. You can tell they're played by humans. I love it. So far away. Take me away. Cow gone. I don't know if I used that joke in the first one or not. I can't remember. <laughs> then it goes into Genghis Khan. This I remember more than the previous song. Do y'all like this remixed uh, version? Remastered? I can't remember which one it is from 2015, or do you prefer the original mix? I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on that. Rhythmicizing that same idea a little bit more. And that's a five. So that's an A. Guitars are playing such sturdy, accompanying rhythm guitar parts to these sections. It's really great in terms of how it's arpeggiating through the notes of the chords, giving us a little bit of non-chord tones, but staying rooted in these, and it allows this other guitar to soar above it. It's really fantastic writing. All the way down to five. Down to seven, six, then five. All great songs. Yeah, if it was just um, Genghis Khan, it would be great, but both of them together are wonderful. Okay, last one. This is Drifter. And rock and roll, he says. So subtonic back to D. So this one's D. 
And another compound meter song, like that shuffle beat, right? Gotta sing my song, y'all. So this one is a little more positive. After an entire album of the darker side of the human psyche, I wanna cuddle up to you tonight. We're looking to the future, you know? There's a cure. So they think it's gonna be a new day. We're looking at that. We're roaming and drifting and singing and playing our songs. It's gonna be a new day. It's a fun way to end out the album. Tempo and meter. This is Steve's bass. Drums are righteous too. us to the end of the album friends it's remarkable i've got seventh son of a seventh son up on the wall uh my favorite uh so far iron maiden album that i've heard and i gotta tell you killers might be my second favorite that's wonderful metal music friends it really really is the it's like prog metal 
they're not just an E minor. It's funny because I went, as I started doing uh, Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden was the very first band that I reviewed when I started doing musical reactions. It was actually, I've told the story many times, but it bears repeating. It was my brother who said, uh, when I decided, you know, that, yeah, I, can, I think I can do these reaction videos and bring something interesting to them. Uh, and I was like, where do I start though? And he says, you gotta go Iron Maiden. He says, Iron Maiden fans will show up for their band um, like no other uh, band's fan base. Um, it's, you know, up the irons, right? And, uh, and I went with a lot of these great, you know, just all time great songs from Iron Maiden. And I kind of got into this habit. Oh, they're in E again. They're, they're all over the place. Harmonically here, rhythmically from their, uh, their tempos. We got kind of a ballad in there, uh, a really lovely, varied and powerful musical side. And to go along with side one, it's quite an album, friends. Uh, I'm, I'm quite impressed. Since I heard uh, side one about four weeks ago, the cause of death for Paul has been made public. Uh, when I uh, recorded that side one, they hadn't come out and said uh, what was the cause of death. Uh, his label has now said that he had been dealing with several health issues. His sisters uh, said that he had a tear in uh, the sack around his heart and that blood filled it from the main uh, aorta uh, artery and caused his heart to stop. And apparently his death was pretty instantaneous. It's scary but I don't think that he suffered a lot as he passed. It was, it sounds like it was just something that happened very quickly. And, um, yeah, it just brings mortality back into our, um, our active consciousness here. When we think about, um, you know, Paul, uh, passing like that and, um, you know, it, it makes us cherish, I think, the music that we hear and the musicians that provide that music even more. As we get older and we develop more uh, perspective about life's journey and uh, all of these different things start uh, demanding our attention and fraying us somehow, it's great to just kind of come back into a community and a sound and a group of people that are safe to us and stick with us and provide some stability and a place to gather and celebrate music, celebrate art, kind of get retuned and, uh, and reset, you know, it's just wonderful. These bands and Iron Maiden, God bless them. They've been at this for so long. They've put the work in friends and and they do it because they love the music and they love their fans and uh it's it's just a remarkable achievement their career but it's only done out of hard work you know they're masters of their craft and i i really did groove with them taking a lot of time on this uh album to have songs about mental health and sort of the darker side of our mental health struggles. You know, mental health is a personal journey, but I think it's a universal human trait. It's something that we all have in common. And these songs are all on the human condition. And like I've said in other metal videos, I like the weight and the sheer auditory power that metal music has uh, at its disposal you know, as a tool for expressing uh, these really intense feelings that we have as part of our human nature. You know, when things can't be a ballad and they need to be just screamed at the top of our lungs or just a wall of sound uh, enveloping us, you know, there's an outlet for that. You know, when an acoustic guitar just won't do and you need that amp cranked up to 11, y'all know what I'm talking about. There's a style of music for that. And as a result, I think many of these metal songs 
take on <clears throat> human grief, uh, human disillusionment, uh, depression, and similar negative emotional states in a way that other musical genres and styles uh, can't quite do, right? They can turn those amps up to 11. They can just blister us with sound and overwhelm us in a different way than where we might be currently overwhelmed. And, uh, and that can shock us sort of back into a regular rhythm if we're off our, off our game. Um, I'm learning about the power of metal music, y'all. I had shunned it for decades. Uh, not necessarily because I didn't like the sounds, but because I was specifically interested in pursuing other styles of music. And as I've gotten time to go on this personal journey of trying to understand all of this repertoire that a lot of people have um, really taken to, and understand its power and understand what it has going for it, I'm learning, friends, and uh, I, I appreciate having the opportunity, uh, thanks to y'all, to experience this and have y'all along for the ride with me. It's very uh, cathartic. Uh, I love learning. I love diving into new music or new music to me and trying to see how it works, what's behind it, and my main goal is to see if I can figure out what's going on in the brain or the brains of the people that are behind the music and seeing what are their perspectives, what are their experiences that helped inform this, what are they trying to say to us, how can I uh, take in what they've provided for us and either rock out in the moment or have it sit with me for a while and and really help me when it when it when I need it to uh, help me whether it's just keeping me company or uh, helping me rock out or helping me to get through some really negative parts of uh, this human experience when I'm really depressed or when I'm um, you know just can't can't deal right it's 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 an option I've been. Uh, listening, uh, I've been struggling the last uh, several w weeks, friends. There's just a whole lot going on in the world. It's hard to keep it all straight. And I've largely gone back to music that soothes me, which is largely not metal music. But I've got to say, coming back and doing this Metal Monday, this is the first video that I have recorded in a few weeks. It's the longest real break that I've had. Uh, in a long time on the Daily Doug, and this is my first one back. And I got to say, friends, it feels great to be back in the chair. This music has given me life today, and I hope that it has for you as well. A great way to start off our Metal Monday, Up the Damn Irons, y'all. Iron Maiden continues to bring it, and um, I thank them for their music, especially this one, all the way back in 1981, Killers, their sophomore album. I've now heard all of it, and I think it's pretty damn good, y'all. That's my professional opinion. Thanks, y'all, for hanging out with me today. We'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.